All right. Hi, everybody. Hi. Good morning. Good morning. Namaste. Namaste. How many people here uh, who know who I am already? Almost everybody. Oh we have two lonely ladies to convert. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Oh, I'm teasing. I'll do a little bit about who I am then. Uh, my name is Christopher Otecki. I am a psychic astrologer. I've been practicing astrology for about 24 years now. Um, I got into it because a girlfriend ran my chart and broke up with me, actually. <laughs> She's like, you're no good for me. It's all career with you. You'll never be home. I'm sorry. I'm like, holy shit. Like, <laughs> I, had to learn. I had to learn for myself, and I found that um, I had a lot of knowledge already, a lot of past life knowledge, a priori knowledge, because it just got, started coming to me and coming to me, and started reading all the girls at work and it wasn't long before one girl was like you really should get paid for this you know like because I was giving it away so 20 years later um, I've been doing internet astrology doing videos on the web um, now I do them five days a week it's called Namaste Today where I just basically am a little show for you to start your day with a cup of tea that's kind of my idea is just to get you off the right way you know what I mean because a lot of times we start our day uh, off that's when the whole day is off so I like to give people kind of a forecast so I've been studying astrology this long while, and one of the problems with um, doing astrology five days a week is the freaking planets move slowly. <laughs> so you find yourself the next day like, okay, the only thing that's changed is the moon. You know what I mean? Like, and I was starting to, in my first start of doing this, I was doing 12 horoscopes a day, five days a week, which is... Now, looking back, I have no idea how I did that, you know, like, but, um, so for every sign, I had to come up with what's changing today, and I observed as an, as a person who read people every day, and also paid attention to politics and everything else going on in the day, that, like, you can be in the sign of Aries or in the sign of Taurus, and one day is so different from the next, right, in our lives, and it's all in the same sign. It started to bug me, like, what is going on here? There must be something here I'm not seeing in, in astrology besides the aspects and what comes in the standard cookbook of astrology. So I actually remember the day I was in the green room studio and I was I literally prayed to my guides, which I do a lot, by the way, um, for what to talk about because it's coming up with stuff to, you know, inspire people five days a week. <laughs> like It's actually tough. No wonder why TV doesn't bother, you know. Um, and my guide said to me, I said, what should I talk about? I don't know what to talk about. And, I kept, and they kept saying, two... And I was like, two, two, two what? Too much? Like I was thinking T-O-O. They're like, two. It was like a Scooby-Doo kind of haunting. And <laughs> I'm like, okay. And I just looked down at the paper and I suddenly noticed that on this particular day, every planet was at a 20-something degree. All were starting with the number two. And I was like, oh, my God, that's interesting. The degrees are all harmonizing here under this number two. And that's what kind of started things uh, gestating for me for what I call step astrology. And the real breakthrough was when I was reading um, a Linda Goodman book. Who here likes Linda Goodman? Didn't everyone start with Linda? I did. I, now I know, looking back, it's like, yeah, it was odd at age seven to be reading an astrology book. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> love signs, you know? <laughs> like, I was looking up everything. But Linda Goodman cracked the code, and what she said was that she had identified a numerological number that goes with every planet, okay? So she identified what planet goes with what number. And I've been looking to crack that code anyways because I know that spirit is all one, so we know that this astrology transit, you know, equals this tarot card. Like, we started to kind of map that out. So I was very curious about it. And I thought, I wonder if uh, Linda's system applies to the degrees of the planets. I wonder if it applies. So I started kind of doing some research, and 10 years later, <laughs> which is how stubborn I am as a Taurus, like I got to know it actually works. I use the system with my predictions, I use the system with my personal readings, and I found after 10 years it is just 100% accurate. In fact, as far as I'm concerned, this understanding of numerology working with astrology as a partner, not as separate fields, to me is part of the, the big picture. And I think for astrology, it's the missing link. Like, if you've been, a, anyone here practice astrology? You guys just go to astrologers. Okay. That helps me out. Well, let me tell you as an astrologer. <laughs> like, well, you, you know, being psychic has really helped because honestly, when I do readings, my guides will give me the answer a lot of times. I don't have to know like the math or any of the in-depth of the astrology. But one thing about astrology is, is like when I look at people's charts, you know, you would see like the chart of Adolf Hitler can be the same chart as a saint. And you're like, what the fuck? You know, like. 
how, how can this both be the same? You know, how can they be so, express themselves so differently? And this is part of the missing link of the degrees. The degrees to me showed me that, um, that there's a lot more information there talking about the states of awareness that are at work, okay? So to give you a little background on astrology and how my, my approach to it is, we're actually all signs. You're every sign in the zodiac. Everyone is, okay? And what it is is that during the month of your birthday, God's playing your tune, basically, playing your tune, playing the tune you like the most. So really everybody in this room is a Leo. Do we have any real Leos, by the way? Oh, look at this, sitting next to each other, two thrones, right? <laughs> Where's your, are these with these your servants or no? <laughs> it's funny. Um, but really everyone is a Leo. Same birthday. Holy oh. shift. Same birthday. We should look it up. What birthday is it? Pardon? What birthday is it? July 30th. Okay. Would you look up the step number for July 30th? We'll just, yeah, if you could. That'd be good. Well, you probably, if you're born within like 10 years, you probably have the same step number. Well, I think you told me I was a sex. A step six? Yeah. Okay, good. All right. We'll verify that. Okay. So um, everyone is a Leo, basically. And what, I, what I've started to learn, one of the big things I had in readings was, like, you can read where people are. Like, you know, you have this dysfunction. You come from this family. This is your crap. But one thing that I disagree with as an astrologer is, like, where is it going? Like, what am I supposed to direct my clients towards? Like, and, and all the old books are really dark. Like, you're doomed, you're a thief, you know, like, it's like you're pretty much over with, which is the other problem I have with astrology, was really tough. So what I started to realize is the degrees actually tell us a lot of information. I, and as I started to unveil and do my research, I realized as souls incarnate, the degrees of their planets go up. So the higher the degree of a planet, the more sophisticated you are in that particular state of awareness. Everyone is a Leo, but everyone else has all the other states of awareness too, or all the other signs inside of them. And what the planets tell us is how good you are at each sign, how much you have done of that state of awareness, how much you have experienced. Do you have some, a question? <laughs> okay. So it really, um, for me, that was the, the big breakthrough because you can see right away, using the degrees, what I call step astrology, you can, you can see right away how evolved a person is or not in a particular uh, way of being a human. You can see where they're completely blind, and you can also see where they're really talented, um, which is helpful because a lot of times our own talent blinds us, actually. That's a big thing I find in the charts is you know you're great here, so you don't look over here. <laughs> So, um, so I thought today I would go through the steps with you just to give you a little bit of an idea of how this works and give you the number association with your sign um, and kind of just walk you through the steps and talk about how you can just real quickly apply it to your chart. I'm going to probably do a um, step astrology workshop here in the Denver area this summer if you want to like get deep on your chart and like bring your husband's chart to <laughs> like we'll figure it all out. <laughs> In one, uh, in one swoop. And that's another thing you'll find, too. As far as degrees are concerned, I found that, um, you know, a lot of relationships share degrees. They have a lot of sharing degrees. You'll also see themes of the degrees within your own chart, people hitting over and over again certain degrees in their chart. And this is the same issue. So degrees is almost like another whole school of thought that goes into the classic astrology, and it uses the power of numerology, which is really interesting to me. Uh, but that makes sense, because God is, period, right? So, you know, like, whatever we, we measure. So, anyone here is a Scorpio? Oh, wow. We have a lot of... Uh... That's funny. It's a salute. All the Scorpios are... Well, no, it's not Nazis. <laughs> I won't do that. Now, Scorpios... Out of, out of 0 through 11, what do you think your number would be? Yeah. It is. It's 0. So, no, it's okay. So it turns out that Pluto is, Pluto, the planet Pluto, is actually the number 0, which is really powerful. This, to me, changed my whole life of understanding. It makes sense because if you want to come to our solar system, you got to get through Pluto, right? Like, so all aliens have to get through Pluto. you got to cross Pluto's path. Pluto is the absolute beginning. And actually, it took a long time for some cultures even to understand the consciousness of Scorpio or Zero 
or the consciousness of boundaries between us. And that's what zero really is, drawing a boundary. What stunned me was um, I learned that, you know, basically as far as the planets are concerned, the right order to follow them is the order of numbers, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, right? So it's interesting that when I believe that when God created earth and consciousness or whatever, Scorpios came first, <laughs> basically. The first thing you do is you draw a zero. You hold space and time for what you want to create. I find that this is where my clients uh, goof up the most in life is they, they don't take time and space. And I think it's almost kind of like, I mean, if we manifest as creators, we're basically putting out, we're basically creating spells. We're manifesting little magic inside of it. Of course, you got to create a bubble before you put in the spell, right? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, makes total wizard sense if you think about it. So we know where our Leos are. Can Leo guess what their number would be? You probably already know. Absolutely. Leos are number one, right? Which is also the sun. I think this is the Leo in the center, and this is Pluto in the outside. I actually think this symbol is an understanding of how the universe works. If you put a boundary around it and you put love inside it, it will manifest. This is the sperm and the egg. This is everything we know, right? And it's so simple. Now, number one is interesting. Um, anywhere you see in your astrology chart where you see a number one, whether it's 15 or number one or 19, it means that you have to put yourself as number one before you do anything in that sign. And a lot of people, especially in this room, all light workers probably and givers, right? How often do you put yourself number one? Probably not. This is why we're not rich, guys, okay? <laughs> like, this is why we have the answers and we're poor, or not all poor, but we're certainly not, you know, at the Ritz today, are we? <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, so number one. Do we have any cancers in the room? I know there's one. My mommy in the back. There she is. That's my mom. <laughs> and, he, and you, my, my lady. This is so cancer to me. Um, cancer is number two. Cancer is number two. And really, so if you go in the order of what I call the 11 steps of serious joy, which is enlightenment repackaged called serious joy, okay, like, um, you know, it goes in the order of Scorpio, Leo, Cancer, basically. Those are the three that we, we go in the order of. And two is so true, too. If you know Cancers, it's never them by themselves, ever. It's always them and someone, right? Always thinking about someone, always feeling someone. The moon is what rules our emotions. And what's interesting is two is a master number. So any, any planet that's in the 20s, right, is a, master, is a master planet. And it starts with a two, which brought me to the revelation that if you're not good at emotions on this planet, you're not going to be a master. You have to master your emotions to master this reality. And I think that's because uh, emotions is the state of awareness in which we pick up on all of our states of awareness. It's through our emotional field. So when Yoda goes in to listen to the force, Yoda's, I think, checking on his emotions. Okay, so two is emotion. And this is the power of two. So the day I've discovered this, I had two, you know. And the funny thing is I was moody as hell that day and didn't even put the two together. So funny. Any Sagittarius's, fabulous Sagittarius, woohoo! With the red glasses, right? That's the red spot, right? <laughs> There's always a spot of red on Sagittarius. Sagittarius is number three, number three. Three is a magic number. So are Sagittarius's. If you know Sagittarius's, it's not a party until there's three, okay? <laughs> Even if they're married, <laughs> okay? <laughs> Even if they're married. And that's not to say they screw around. They just bring the community together. What's interesting from the numerology is, if you think about creation, we have, we have God, or, which is zero, the beginning, one, which is the sun. Now there's two. Baby makes three. Baby makes three is like that expansion out of that family two unit. It makes total sense, right? And three is the power of expansion, the power of consciousness. Uh, and Jupiter is how we collectively, we connect all of our collective consciousness together. So any threes in your chart are pretty magical, in my experience. Um, you know, obviously a purebred three is really magical. A 12 is magical. I'm going to talk about this, but what you do is you add the two degrees to a third degree. I call it a net. So anytime it nets a three, you have a teacher, you have someone who understands consciousness from past lives, and they're awakening that consciousness in their chart. And that's, you know, it's interesting too, like with um, the Masons and their master of three and 33. Starts to decode some of that other stuff we've all heard about. Any Aquarians? Oh, there she is. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, strategically scattered. <laughs> they all have their own space. <laughs> They're like, stay the fuck away. This is my space. This is my space. Right? <laughs> stay away. Yeah, Aquarius are opposite of Leo, right? Aquarius is the magical revolutionary four. And four is a revolution, too, because uh, it stabilizes. It turns out we prefer four tables on a leg, on, on a, four legs on a table, excuse me, right? Like four is a more stable number. What's interesting about four is it's Uranus, which means that before it's stable, it's going to be instable. So it's an instable element. Anytime you have fours in your chart, the client is instable there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Right? They're also a potential master at work. I mean, four, what four ends up being and Uranus ends up being is our part of the human consciousness that maps the room. So when you close your eyes and you know she's over there, that's your Aquarius talking. If you, your Aquarius is aware of where everything is in space-time. And this is known as I call the state of belonging, which is the law of attraction. The law of attraction is, yes, everything is attracted based on love as far as like versus like. But also, I think, as far as God is concerned, how do you give two billion creatures the ability to manifest anything they want? They have to all be in the right space and time, right? It's the way God coordinates, I think, manifestation. Otherwise, we'd all be, like, manifesting pink dragons in each other's yards, right? It wouldn't be very fun. So four is interesting. Four is unstable. Any Geminis? Oh, we're Gemini quiet today. I wonder where the Geminis are. I wonder what they're doing. <laughs> My son's a Gemini. I better text him right now. <laughs> Gemini is step five. Step five. So fives are really popular in people's charts. Um, we'll talk about, so 23 adds to a five, 14 adds to a five, and then there's step five. Step five is interesting. I always think of the dice, you know, in dice where you have one, two, three, four, and then you have that dot in the center. That's Gemini. They want to be, this is the part of your soul that wants to connect all the dots, right? Bring it all together. They want to intellectually be in the center of these four things spinning around, right? So the power of five is uh, the power of our intellectual side. And because we're kind of in this science state right now, since, since Egypt, it's been going downhill for us spiritual people, you know what I mean? Like, um, there's a lot of fives on the planet. You know, they say the devil's number is 666. I disagree. I think it's 555. <laughs> Well, I think five, well, zero is God in everything, I think, but. Oh, it's six spaces in the steps. Yeah, there's always a hidden spe step. Yeah, exactly. Well, five, I think just because uh, the mind can deny God and deny consciousness. So if you stack up a lot of mental and don't have any emotional or anything there, you can get kind of dark. <laughs> you know, as we all know, our own minds can get kind of dark, right? Step five is what people uh, probably, you know, have the hardest time with in modern society. And I think pharmaceuticals and everything are on a sort of campaign to make us think we're, we're crazy. And all they need to do is get us to question if we are. And then the, the nature of step five is to keep questioning all four dots all the time. So it's a nice little mind game that has happened. But step five is where we come alive. Any Libras? Hi. Oh, they're sitting together and they're friends? Oh, OK. <laughs> You're pointing to her. <laughs> Libra is step six. Step six is when it starts to get really sixy, right? <laughs> Libras are sixy people, very sixy people. Um, six is interesting because, you know, if you think about the numbers of six, you're always juggling three and three on each side, and the Libra tends to want to be on, you know, in the middle of all this stuff. But sixes in your chart shows where you, as a soul, already know how to open up to something. So sixes are, so we think of six or we think of Libra or think of Venus as love, but really it's getting into the bedroom. Six is like what allows you in, what allows you to open up. The part of you that opens up to something or doesn't op open up to something, all right? Um, and 666 is, I, I highly doubt that three Venuses equals the devil, I'm sorry. <laughs> I just don't believe it. I think the devil actually made us think that, so we didn't know, you know? Any Pisces? Pisces rising, kind of. I'll give you credit. Okay. Hi, Pisces. Well, happy birthday to the Pisces who aren't here. They're probably still sleeping in from St. Patty's and hungover, right? They won't, they won't be up for another hour or so. 
<laughs> What's that? Yeah, they'll be hurting, but they recuperate fast. Pisces is the holy number seven. So we've all heard about sevens, and, you know, uh, 777 in Vegas is a good thing. <laughs> but seven is really spirit. Whenever seven comes up, uh, this is spirituality talking. This is past life of spiritual awareness. Remember, your natal chart is who you have been before and where you're starting the game now. Okay? So the degrees really tell us, oh, this person spent a long time praying to God in a past life if there's a seven. And you won't just see one seven. You'll see seven in the moon, seven in the sun, seven on Mercury. Like You'll see themes of these step numbers in their charts, and you start to see what I call a soul harmonic, where the soul has a harmony. And a lot of times, you know, we always say, oh, a grand trine harmonizes you. A trine harmonizes you in astrology. These are aspects that harmonize you. But what I found is the same number in the same chart harmonizes you. So if your Mercury is at seven way over here and your Moon's at seven way over there, they're talking, I believe, even though they're not trined or, or not connected in the classical astrology sense. All right? And that's what seven is, is our sensory perception. We're all born with psychic awareness. We just don't listen to it. It's number seven. Okay, any Capricorns? One Capricorn. All right. That's usually how it is. One per room, one boss per room, right? <laughs> Capricorn is Sirius Saturn, number eight. And I always like to tell the story of number eight. I think Capricorn stumbled upon a zero, and they twisted it into an eight. That's my story. They're just like, I'm going to turn two out of this mofo. <laughs> And that's what they do. They penny pinch you, right? So crazy eights, you know, you'll find Capricorn is an earth sign. And you'll find that the earth signs all have two numbers except Capricorn. But Capricorn has kind of two numbers in one here. And this is literally kind of in the glyph. I think what Capricorns try to do is they decide and cut energy into in, cut off what's not working. They uh, turn, you know. They downsize a business. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like they're always down, downing the numbers, so to speak. But it turns out that, you know, uh, I believe Saturn is about cutting. It's about cutting away, which is something that I really learned in astrology. Is that God, universe expects you to cut something out. Something's supposed to die. Something's not supposed to make it on the trip with you, uh, so you can focus. That's what Step Eight allows us to do: is focus. And wherever you have Step Eight in your chart, you have a, a lot of focus from a past life. Hi. Hello. <laughs> Sweet boy. I don't want to brag, but kids love me. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'll be at a restaurant and there'll be like three little girls over the booth like, hi. You know, like all smiling to me. I'm like, too old for you, honey. They'll be like, hi. Any, uh, any Aries here? No Aries. Interesting how what's completely not here. Aries is number nine. Number nine. You know what's funny? If you know Aries, they think they're number one, don't they? <laughs> I always say to Aries, like, you don't come on the stage till ninth. <laughs> okay? Like, sit down, relax. That's because nine is really meant to be, you know, if you, and I'm going to go through the steps real quickly, but um, in the process of consciousness, you don't take action until step nine. And one of the things, problem with our culture in America, I think, is that we think, act now. Everything is act now. But in the, in the system of mastery, it's like, no, no, no. Act after you've completed nine steps before this. And that's the thing. With zero, you always have the actual number of steps before it. So um, fascinating stuff with, with it. This is also why they have so much energy. Dear Lord, you know, nine steps of energy in them. Any Tauruses like myself? Yay! Hey, sister. We're catching up. <laughs> How's your milk, honey? <laughs> this was the. What's that? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Taurus is number 10. This took forever for me to channel. I don't think Linda had this one, to be honest. This came from my guides. And a lot came from my guides. Uh, as I started to open up and realize they were talking to me about degrees. By the way, now when I do a reading, my guides are like, over here, over here, over here, over here. Look here, look there. Like, I'm just completely guided to what planet and what. 
And I just basically am their spokesperson. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, but they told me about step 10 in Taurus. I believe Taurus is ruled by Earth. Taurus is ruled by Earth, not Venus. One planet per sign. There's no sharing, <laughs> in my opinion. You can, you're free to disagree. We can argue forever. But I think Taurus is 10. And this is why Tauruses feel like this Earth is ours, right? <laughs> and, and Tauruses get upset with the other things coming into their world, more so usually being the one that, you know, the cows are just sitting there and you guys want to make beef. I mean, we were just having, <laughs> we were just eating grass and you had to come into our world. But 10 is interesting because if you apply the numerology, the step astrology to this, a Taurus is not really a Taurus. A Taurus is really a Leo and a Scorpio combined. Okay? And that is the power of manifestation right there. If you take a 1 and you put it in the center of a 0, you're going to create life. Right? Tauruses are the life. That's what we do. We make milk. We make the substance of life energetically. We build things, right? So this was fascinating to me. And the zero, of course, as we know from math, it's a placeholder, right? So a Taurus must trust. This turns into trust, not protection. A Taurus must hold faith. That's why Taurus is, you know, for me, I put too many zeros past my one at this point. At first, I had no zeros, which is why I kept losing everything all the time. And then I realized, oh, I got to protect my stuff. I got to put up a fence, or they're just going to come in and create beef all the time out of me. You know what I mean? Um, and then I found, oh, abundance comes from putting up more zeros, the more space you put. So I was like, oh, you'll have to wait three weeks for my seminar. The more time and space you put between something, the more valuable it becomes, actually. Which is why we put up big fences before beautiful subdivisions, right? It's like, wow, there's a big wall. There must be something. This is human conscious. We're kind of gorilla-like. We can't help but fall in this line. We're like, there must be something behind that. <laughs> What's in that box? <laughs> I mean, it must be valuable, right? And of course, comment are like, oh, it is. Oh, it is. Do we have any Virgos here in the room? Oh, sure. My son is a tourist. Oh, love it. I'm a Leo. Oh, love it. Mm. Oh, wow. Thanks for bringing that up. You find that a lot, actually. When you, di when you do the whole family dynamic, you find that um, you're all kind of holding the same vibrations. Another thing I find with the family dynamic, too, is certain degrees. Like, and we'll talk about a couple certain degrees. Like, uh, one of the hard degrees is step 13, 13 degrees. 13 is really tough. And usually when you have a mom with a bunch of 13s, you have a kid with a bunch of 13s, the whole family's <laughs> nuclear, right? They're all ready to change together. So you see that commonality. Yeah, thanks for bringing that up. That's powerful. Yeah, I'm Leo and Taurus energy. I'm a, I'm a Taurus and Leo rising. I'm like, and I want more love and more. And Leo moon. So do we have any Virgos in the house? Caitlin is like barely. Look, at, I love Nikki Bright. Excuse me. She's got a new... I forget your, your new Marian name. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I met this woman when she was Nikki Bright. Omen. Bright Omen. That's right. Forgive me. Nikki actually helped me into my heart, just so you guys know. She gets the total credit for that. She's total master of inner child, master of one there. In fact, that's a great segue, using an example, because Chiron is 11, which is Virgo. And this took a long time for me to download, too. My guides kept telling me it's 11. I'm like, I don't get it. You know what I mean? What's that? The healer. Yeah, the healer. Anyone here catch the clock at 11, 11? Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. I think this, to me, the, the glyphs are very powerful. And I think in human consciousness, glyphs are representative of the entire, the way it works, right? What is a Virgo all about? Get your shit lined up right now, straight in order, like... <laughs> right? Double Virgo be 11, 11. That's a lot of Virgo energy. That's a boot camp. Sometimes I want to slunch over. <laughs> What's cool, though, is what is really a Virgo? A Virgo is really two Leos. Oh, my God. Which explains so much. <laughs> Doesn't it? The, what's crazy is that they've, they always love... We'll get to that in a second. No, no, it's good. You're good. See, Virgo's already jumping ahead. <laughs> She's like, let me take it further. <laughs> well, here's the big thing. Virgos are always loving two things at once. Two things at once. I, 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 like, 
right? They always want two things at once. And they're never satisfied because you can only focus on one of the two at once, right? Like if you really want to give it full attention. Or sometimes Virgos don't. They're like, you know, breastfeeding the baby and cooking and on the phone. Like, that's, you know what I mean? Like, that's Virgo, right? Like, not anyone gets the whole 11 very often, right? And for them, it's almost hard to focus that much. And what Caitlin brought up is true. That's the next fascinating thing about step astrology. They add like numerology, okay? So there's really three dimensions here. There's I love, I love some more, okay? And then you add it together and you get I feel. And that's why Virgos are so moody. <laughs> well, no. <laughs> she says in public. I'm sure the way here, she's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she has a Taurus husband. I think that helps. Notice, and that's what I was saying a little earlier. It's like, so earth signs are kind of heavy, right? They have two numbers. They have two numbers. It takes two numbers to start to manifest solid, okay? Well, Capricorn, well, Capricorn took one number and made it into two. <laughs> and they controlled it into two is what they did, Right? But the earth signs are heavy signs. They are heavy, interesting numbers there. So you, you do add the two to a, what I call a net, a net state of awareness. So, And this is kind of how I counsel my clients. It's like, we'll look at other degrees here, but they, you may be focused on one, two, on one of these ones. Oh, my God, I love this. Oh, my God, I love this. But the universe is saying, no, no, focus on how you feel, the two, okay? The two is the net, so you stay in, so when you're analyzing your charts, you, you do the addition to see where it nets, okay? And that's really the ruling state. So I believe cancer rules Virgos, really. At the end of the day, their emotions end up ruling them, okay? If they're focusing on one of these ones and they're ignoring the two, they don't know why they're so crazy. They're like, I'm feeling crazy. I'm all batted out. It's because you're focusing on just the ones and you're not focusing on the, on the two-ness of it. The, the emotional feeling. And the emotional feel does allow you to feel two things at once. I feel I love them, I feel I hate them, right? We can feel multiple things, and that's the design of our emotions. Okay. Any questions so far? No? Okay. Cool. Happy, happy. Yes, please. Every plant, yes. Okay, no problem. We can go over those again for sure. So if you are studying your astrology and you're, and you're studying people's charts, one of the things I really realized is that experience level is built into the charts, which explains why you have smart Tauruses and dumb Tauruses and smart Aries and dumb Aries. When I say dumb, I mean uh, they're not yet aware of some of the things that come with the sign. You know, like a young Aries, let's call it that way. A young Aries will, you know, on your mark, get set, boom, they're in the water. You know what I mean? Before you say go, right? <laughs> Learning to control that primary state of awareness. So I started to learn after, you know, years of doing charts that you can actually tell how wise or ignorant a soul is on a particular sign. In fact, it breaks down by the deacons, okay? The deacons in astrology, which is every 10 degrees. So if you have a planet that is between 0 and 10 degrees, you are, really it's 9 degrees, it varies. It's really 9, to be honest with you. But sometimes it's, a 10 is weird. These 10 and 20 kind of are bridging degrees, so you'll have a person who is manifesting kind of young in a 10, and then you'll have a person who's finally manifesting mature as a 10, so they kind of dip in and out, just so you know. But really, 0 through 9 for sure, those are your young, those are your young elementaries. These are your beginners, okay? So if you go into your chart and you see your Mercury's at step, step 6, when it comes to thoughts, you keep it on the beginner level, okay? When it comes to thoughts, you keep it on the beginner level. Um, if you have, you know, the, the bigger thinkers that consider more in their thinking have higher degrees, okay? The other interesting thing about anything from 0 to 10 is there's really a 0, if you know math, it's really 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, 3, right? So that means that anyone who has degrees in these first, before not, uh, 0 through 9, have issues with protecting that part of their life. They have issues of protecting which means they don't take time and space to make sure that they're okay in the first place. And this is what leads to people's kind of crazy behavior. A lot of times a young planet or a young part of your soul 
will freak out or whatever simply because you didn't check if the doors were locked. That's why you're freaking out, you know? You didn't check to make sure everything's okay. You didn't make sure everything was grounded. So um, I honestly think, like, I have a low mercury. My mercury is at six, but I, but I process way high up. I think, I think you start to see, after you have certain uh, clients, you see that they have a lot of charts, a lot of numbers in the high degrees and a few in the low. A lot of times it, they put their energy, I think, lower so they can get along with everyone or speak simply or bring it down, you know, to a certain level. So don't necessarily think that if you have a zero to nine degree planet that you're dumb in that area per se, but also, if you're feeling dumb, it might be one of these areas. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, kind of depends on the soul. You have to look at the whole kind of pattern of the degrees and the steps going on. You can come in if you want. <laughs> All right. So the next is, um, again, 10. I still think 10 swings both ways, as Tauruses are kind of that way, male and female. 10 is, uh, prof to 19 is proficient. Okay. Proficient is that these are the people who are pretty much running planet Earth, are the people in the teens, who have their degrees in the teens. These are your hard workers. These are people who show up all the time. They're very good at what they do. And why is it that? Because their heart is involved in everything. Okay, so it's always your heart and what you, you know, in this case, it's your heart and what you're willing to act on. And this adds to another 10. 19 adds to a 10. So manifestation. People who get a lot of things done to manifest are 19s. Like their busy bodies are always doing stuff uh, all the time. Okay, so this is your proficient degrees. And the key here is the love. So a lot of my clients... Um, who are kind of broken down, having hard times, like losing their energy. They're not protecting their heart. They're giving their heart away. They're giving the one away all the time. And the way it was kind of happened on earth is you were born first and then came the task. You know, so God's spirit is always put yourself first. All right. Then we have the masters. The masters, yes. The masters are anyone in the 20 degrees. Okay. And what's interesting is, is your masters are people, um, any plant you have in the 20s, you're not going to actually even see the power of that until you're at least 40, in my opinion. And I'll let you know when I'm 50. I mean, I, I'm, I'm basing it on being honest with myself, you know what I mean? Like, but really, masters take almost until 60 to awaken, to be honest. It takes two Saturn returns to wake up. So any of your 20-degree 20, 20 planets, a master considers himself a student until they learn. And really what you have is late bloomers here uh, because there's so much information to get reacquainted with yourself in this lifetime as you incarnate and awaken. It just takes a long time to lay out all of your, your ducks in a row. So your 20-degree planets are your master planets. And what's fascinating is they all start with a two. It's all about how you feel and, okay? How I feel about your 20s are, you know, 20s are just like 10s. You got your 20s that are all like scared all the time because they don't protect. And then you got your 20s who are protected, be like, stand back. Oh. You know, like they're going to give birth to the room. And they really, <laughs> is that you? <laughs> they really can be very, they can be very powerful or they can be very whiny. Depends on if you've protected this zero or not. And then in my readings, I'm always like, you got to protect zero. You know, you got to take time and space for her majesty or whatever. But how do you feel is very interesting. And I can't get into all of it today. But, um, you know, emotion turns out to be the master, the master state of awareness necessary is what I've learned. And emotion in our culture in the United States, we put at last, right? We do. Even cancers. We treat cancers like crap. We're like, we use them as waitresses a lot of times, right, cancers? We do. <laughs> My mom is like, mm-hmm, girl. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, and emotion is really what almost everyone is having problems with. I got to tell you, you're not really, ups you know, it's, it's not that your kid screwed up or this happened. It's that you feel like crap. Most of the time, our mind can totally deal with it. Our ego is already burying it under the rug. But we feel bad, right? So it turns out that emotion is the way to... You know, nurturing yourself will just give you the secret right way. You take good care of yourself, you're going to succeed. Honestly, that's how we did it when we knew no science and no nothing. Tribes took good care of herself. Look where we got. And now that we're in technology and whatnot, we have forgotten this, this such simple element. Europeans haven't, I think, in many cases. They put their feelings first, for sure. 
but they're older. They've been sitting and evolving in that same spot for centuries. So, you know what I mean? I think we were all the new kids on the block. Of the, all the children of the earth got together and went to America. <laughs> you know what I mean? like, everyone else is like, that sounds hard. All the masters are like, that's too hard. You know, like, I'm not going to do that. That's the one thing about masters. Like, if you have any children, I have a lot of mothers. I have a lot of, uh, actually, you are my demographic, ladies, okay? Like, and they all have children. And a lot of my children that watch, I mean, the mothers that watch my show have a lot of masters for children. They're raising a bunch of masters, which I'm proud to say, like, uh, that I'm teaching the teachers that teach the masters, because that's really where I feel I am. And, you know, their kids are super moody, and they know their kids are super intelligent, but they can't figure out why their kids are babies, okay? And it, you're, a master is a baby! It's super emotional, and the best thing you can do for a genius person is help them deal with their feelings, really, because that's what it... Step two is what grounds everything. So, any questions so far? Does anyone, go ahead. Okay, we'll, we'll put off then. You're an Aquarius, right? Oh, Leo? What was your sign? I forget. Oh, Scorpio. Sorry, Scorpio. Sorry. So glad you brought that up, Scorpio. So glad. Well, okay, go ahead. Very good, yeah. Very good. Let's do it. Let's use the appropriate slide. God is using all of us as puppets right now. Step 22 is the quantum step. This is a magical degree in a person's chart, let me tell you. If they have more than 122 in their chart, they're a troublemaker. Not in a bad way. It's gonna, it, the intention is good of the soul. They're a master, okay? Yes, you're absolutely right. What happens with Step 22 planets is they have all their feelings about one thing and all their feelings about another thing, and they're having a hard time getting them to go together, Step 4, right? Wow. Yeah. And it takes them probably until they're adults or whatever, you know, to, um, to feel like they're on top of their feelings, okay? But then once a Step 22 is on top of their feelings, in other words, they know how they feel, and they know how they feel about everything, and they're grounded, and they take care of their emotions, then they can go out in the world and actually manipulate t two twos. So they can take all the feelings about Israel and all the feelings about Palestine, right, and come up with a stable solution for, two plus two is four, where it's all going to work out. What's the stable solution? It's four, it's I belong, which is, you know what, you Palestines belong over here. And you Israelis belong over here. And that, a lot of cases, I think that's God's solution. You know, we're said to all come together if we love each other. Okay, like is what I think the numbers and the planets point out. If you're in love with each other, then live in the same tribe. If you're not in love with each other, just wave and say hello when you take out the garbage. You know what I mean? Like, we're not necessarily meant to all get together because we're all allowed to be completely individual. This idea that we have to completely be 100% under the same kind of house is not the way I think spirit or God built it. So step 22 is a quantum step. Um, go ahead. Is that pertaining to a rising sign? Absolutely. Okay. So yeah, your rising sign with 22 degrees, that's a person who, as a child, is going to create trouble. Okay, it's the instigator. Be like, did you hear what she said about your mama? Oh, did you hear what she said about, you know, like, that's the step 22. Like, they're creating, you know, issues, and they themselves are also using those issues to understand their own feelings at first. So they can be trouble at first, but they turn out to be breakthrough energy. Our last full moon was step 22, I think. Yeah. We've had a lot of 22s coming on, and that's God universe, like, stirring the pot, like, all right. By the way, Donald Trump, son conjunct Uranus, okay? So he is a 22. He is a 22, and he gets, he's getting everyone. That's why I'm like, you might hate him, but we kind of need to stir the pot, so, you <laughs> know, like... 22s are there to do it. 22s do have the best interest of everyone's feelings. So, all right. Another fun one I want to talk about is step 12. Anyone have any 12s in their chart you know of? She's giving me a smirk here in the front row. It's PMS. Yes, PMS is a good way to put it. Um, 12 adds to a 3, first of all. 1 plus 2 makes 3. So these are your natural born students. Okay, so people who are really good at absorbing. Why? Because their heart is feeling everything. 
Their heart is feeling everything. Heart is feeling everything. So they're very vulnerable. They need a lot of emotional support. But what happens is, is they end up being centers of culture, okay? Because their heart loves everyone, and they feel the woman who feels this way, and they feel the guy who feels that way, and they feel this, and they feel that, and they feel this, and they feel that. And all these people are all gravitated to this person's love, and they feel each other through this person. So these people bring together communities. Step 12s are educators, and they'll kind of, these are the people that are like, I, I'll know it when I feel it. They literally go around life looking for a certain feeling. As soon as they get that feeling, boom, they, they understand. I believe. Step three, they know it. They get it. They can put it all together. What's interesting about 12 is this pretty much tells us how culture gets together. Step three is the first time we have belief. So anything in the first degrees, in a person's, you know, in looking in the whole big perspective of things, anything from zero to 10 it has to do with just you and you. Ain't no one else supposed to be involved. It's all about you and you. Once you get to 10 and move on, you start dealing with other people, okay, and another person. So all of your 10s and above are your community builders, uh, and all the ones others are tend to be followers or soldiers or people who want to, you know, run the touchdown, all adding up to a three. What are we doing on time here? We're almost ready to go, and I'll have questions. The last one I want to do is my favorite number. Anyone want to guess? 21 when it starts to get fun. Yes! <laughs> Step 21 when it starts to get fun. This is the opposite of 12, in a way, right? These are your gigantic community builders, okay? They come with a whole bunch of feelings, and they got love for everyone that gets attached. And this is, these are the people that become, this is the teacher, and 12 is the student, really. At some point, a 12 might become a 21 if they feel strong enough about their feelings, that they can start with their feelings and not have to have the actual knowledge, right? But step 21 is, is a master step. Look for that. It is a lucky step. I feel the next class coming in. I just want to open up uh, to any questions before I let us go. What does it mean that my Medhaven is a contract with Galactic Sunday? That means you're here for God, period. <laughs> we can talk about that. She asked what her Midheaven conjuncts her Galactic Center. Galactic Center is, I believe, your deal with God, what you told God you would do. In your case, your entire mission is for a spirit, in my opinion. Yeah. It is exciting. When is your when is your workshop? What's that? When is your workshop going to be? You know? We're looking in June, somewhere in the area in June, somewhere comfortable. Um, if you want to be part of the workshop, please sign this. If you don't have one of my cards, here they are. I do a little show in the mornings, Monday through Friday, called Namaste Today. It's just a great way to start your day. That's awesome. And thank you. I appreciate you coming. Thank you. Namaste. Yeah.